I always wanted to be a doctor. By the time I got my college degree, I decided to go to a place where people needed, I thought, a lot of help. I left for the most impoverished country in the Western Hemisphere. In rural Haiti, I met sick people who got no medical treatment at all. I knew from the first week I was there that I was meant to be there and that I would, would stick with Haiti and Haiti would stick with me. I was assisting a Haitian doctor when great news came. I was accepted to Harvard Medical School. As a Harvard student, I still spent a great deal of time in Haiti, and that was when I first saw tuberculosis patients. Sometimes they cough up blood, bright red blood. You never forget that. I noticed that many TB patients weren't cured. Exhausted by poverty, they just couldn't complete therapy. It became clear that the system wasn't good. We suggested a major overhaul. And that's when we developed a community-based treatment program that relied on community health workers, daily visits, social and nutritional support, so that people could take this very long treatment. So then we saw everybody getting cured. My friends and I passionately shared an idea that we borrowed from liberation theology. The poor should have preferential treatment in healthcare. Together, we founded Partners in Health. The money, that's the problem. We don't have the money. But that doesn't mean we can't get the money. We can get the money. I dreamt of building a hospital in rural Haiti, but funding for Partners in Health has always been a nightmare. As soon as we pulled together some money, we built our first clinic in Haiti's poorest area. In 1993, we went to work in Peru, where my friend, Father Jack, served. On the outskirts of Lima, we faced another challenge, MDR-TB, or multidrug-resistant tuberculosis. In developing countries, this disease was a death sentence due to the high cost of therapy. In 1994, Father Jack himself died of MDR-TB. You know, that's really how we got involved in responding to that epidemic. You know, that's adversity. That's painful. For two years, we treated patients with the help of community health workers, and the results were dramatic. Melchiatis was sick for several years. We found him on death's door in despair, and we cured him like the others. We presented these Peru results to the big shots in the TV world, but many of them kept arguing that the drugs were just too costly. But we didn't give up. My friend and partner in health, Jim Kim, revealed something remarkable. The patents for TB drugs had long expired. This dropped the prices by 90%. The WHO then was forced to change the treatment policy. At the end of the 1990s, 12 million HIV positive people in developing countries didn't get treatment. Again, our results in Haiti proved that such patients could be brought back to good health with community-based care. But politicians, the World Bank, insisted that it was not sustainable, not cost-effective. My suspicion is they're not getting a lot of sex because they spend a lot of time screwing the poor. Together with HIV activists, we kept fighting for the rights of the poor to antiretroviral therapy. Eventually, the United Nations supported us. Then, the George W. Bush administration pledged $15 billion to treat and prevent HIV in Africa and the Caribbean. Millions of lives were saved, and this happened in part due to our successful results in rural Haiti. In 2004, we were invited to Rwanda. Back then, big parts of it were what we call a clinical desert, people not getting medical treatment. We helped build out Rwanda's healthcare delivery system and then built a university focused on health equity with and thanks to great support from Rwanda's government. What would it look like to have global health equity where poor people weren't left out to see those dreams enacted into policy and then at a national scale? Well, I've only seen that once in my life and that's been in Rwanda. In 2010, a devastating earthquake shook Haiti. Hundreds of thousands were maimed or killed. So we set the goal of building a teaching hospital, which was our biggest infrastructural project. And we already see the results. The medical response to the recent earthquake in Haiti was really remarkable. I can tell you, having just returned from Haiti, from the earthquake zone, what I saw there last week just blew me away, how competent my colleagues were. And they're all Haitian. And that's a result of long-term investments in Haitian partners. Bad things happen in the world constantly, but we never felt despair because we're acting, we're trying to serve. Now Partners in Health works in 11 countries and five continents. We have 20,000 employees. I was about to say, well, that's costly, you know, staff stuff, space system support, but that's not true. It's actually inexpensive to do this the right way. So, I mean, come on, it's a bargain. Love, Paul. I said that in, I said that in class the other day. I have no idea what the students thought. <laughs>